Well, good morning and welcome. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I'm Gary Barclay and joining me today is Jean Bell. Have you ever found yourself being tempted or your faith being tested? Of course you have. Does God understand in those moments? Well, Hebrews 4 verses 14 to 16 say, Let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we have a great high priest who has gone into the very presence of God, Jesus, the Son of God. Our high priest is not one who cannot feel sympathy for our weaknesses. On the contrary, we have a high priest who was tempted in every way that we are, but did not sin. Let us have confidence then and approach God's throne where there is grace. There we will receive mercy and find grace to help us when we need it. So let's worship God as we sing before the throne of God's above. So let us have confidence. Let's approach God's throne of grace. Let's open our hearts to him and bring him our prayers. Let's pray. Spirit of God, come to us. Refresh us, restore us, renew us. Breathe life into us. Help us to be present to you and to be open to your presence with us. Father in heaven, we lift our hearts to you in prayer, remembering that we approach a holy and majestic, wise and powerful God, who is loving and faithful, and rules in truth and righteousness. As your Son Jesus 
fasted 40 days in the desert and was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. Give us grace to live our lives in obedience to your Spirit. Give us the confidence to approach your throne at all times and to discover that grace that is available to us, that mercy and help just when we need it. And as Jesus battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert, help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer that we may witness to your saving love in him. We thank you, our Father, that our name is written on your hands and in your heart. And because Jesus, our sinless Saviour, died, we are pardoned and set free to know you and love you and enjoy you and worship you. Thank you, our God, that our souls have been purchased with his blood, that we are made eternally alive in Christ. May, may we always find our joy and our purpose in him, and along with all his faithful disciples throughout the years, seek your name to be honoured, and your kingdom to come, as we pray the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from Mark chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 9 to verse 13. The Baptism and Temptation of Jesus Not long afterward, Jesus came from Nazareth in the province of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. As soon as Jesus came up out of the water, he saw heaven opening and the Spirit coming down on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my own Son, I am pleased with you. At once the Spirit made him go into the desert, where he stayed forty days, being tempted by Satan. Wild animals were there also, but angels came and helped him. Amen. We all know what it's like to have our faith tested. And we all know what it's like to go through temptation, to have those moments when you can feel yourself being drawn to have to make choices of whether to trust in God and go God's way or to go off in another direction. Well, following his baptism in the Jordan by John, Jesus heard God's voice affirming him and encouraging him as God said to him, you are my own dear son, I am pleased with you. But after that wonderful moment, the Holy Spirit immediately leads Jesus into the desert, where he stays for a period of 40 days. And as Jesus spends that time in the desert praying and fasting, it's a time for him to think through and to prepare himself for all the work that lay ahead of him. For Jesus, it was also a time of testing. The 40 days that Jesus spends in the desert are perhaps symbolic of the time when the people of Israel had been rescued from their captivity in Egypt. They were led into the desert by God, where they wandered for 40 years before entering the promised land of Canaan. Their time in the desert was a time of testing for them. Deuteronomy chapter 8 says, Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you 
in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. And we know the story. We know that it was a test that Israel in so many ways failed. And so here's Jesus now, weakened by almost 40 days of hunger and isolation. And he goes from hearing the father say, you are my own dear son, to the devil taunting him with the words, if you are God's son. The temptation to doubt, the temptation to question, the temptation to change path. Tempting Jesus to doubt his relationship to his father and to use the powers that he had to fulfill his own needs and desires. Well, while Mark doesn't expand on the temptations, Matthew and Luke give us a wee bit more information. And we can see in their Gospels that there were actually three temptations that Jesus faced. The first temptation was to doubt the love of God. Have you ever doubted the love of God for you? Here was Jesus after 40 days and nights of fasting. The devil comes and says, if you are God's son, if you are God's son, I mean, he had heard God say, you are my own dear son. But now the devil comes and says, if you are God's son, order the stone to turn into bread. I mean, later, Jesus would turn water into wine. He would take a few fish and a couple of loaves and he would feed 5,000. So why suffer this kind of hunger? Why not just turn these stones into bread? I mean, Jesus, after all, was hungry after all this time fasting in the desert. But he knew that God was with him. He knew that the Spirit had led him here. He knew that his life was in God's hands and that he was living his life in the plan and purpose of God. Jesus replies from Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. He says, the scripture says, man cannot live on bread alone, but needs every word that God speaks. I mean, Jesus could have used his power for his own purpose, but he never performed a miracle. Not once did he ever perform a miracle for his own benefit. Instead, he chose to trust in the love of his heavenly father. And they trusted him to meet his needs in his time and in his way. The next temptation was to turn away from God. The devil took Jesus to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their greatness, and said, all this I will give you if you kneel down and worship me. He's he literally, he's trying to drive a wedge between Jesus and God. Why endure the cross when you can have everything simply by worshiping me? Here was the offer to have the crown without the cross. But Jesus holds on to the promise and he holds on to the purpose of God's. He'd later say, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose their soul? Jesus knew that he would rule the kingdoms of the world, but that he would do it as he fulfilled the plan and the purpose of God through the cross, that there was no other easy way, that God had promised him the nations as his inheritance. But it was through the path of the cross that he would receive that inheritance. And Jesus refuses to be led away from the Father as he quotes Deuteronomy 6, verse 13. You shall worship the Lord your God and you shall serve him only. You see, to bow down and to worship the devil at that point would have been an act of idolatry and Jesus would have lost everything but he held firm to his purpose. He held firm to the word of God 
and to his commitment to God. You shall worship the Lord your God and you shall serve him only. The third temptation was to test God's faithfulness. The devil took Jesus to Jerusalem, the holy city, set him on the highest point of the temple and said to him again, if you are God's son, again the question, if you are God's son, throw yourself down for the scripture says, God will give orders to his angels about you. They will hold you up with their hands so that not even your feet will be hurt on the stones. Jesus answers that temptation again with scripture. He quotes Deuteronomy 6, 16, which says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. I don't need to jump off the temple to know that my father loves me, that he is with me. I don't need to test God in that way. That was the mistake, you see, that Israel had made in the desert when they complained against Moses and against God, asking, is God with us or not? And then they demanded some kind of sign that God was with them by, de by demanding that Moses would give them water to drink. We do that, you know, from time to time. We test God. We do it when we ask for particular healings and when we look for things to happen that uh, we want to see happen. And if they happen, then we're delighted. And if they don't happen, then we're wondering, well, is God really there? Is he with me? Does he love me? There are times when we are to pray for things and good things. There are times we are to pray for healings. There are times when we are to pray for God's provision. There are times we, we pray for God's leading and God's help and God's grace, and God's favor. But here is the temptation to test God. And if God doesn't come through, to know God as a failure. But rather than test God, Jesus chose to rest in his Father's faithfulness. Each test Jesus faced revealed something of his heart and his dependency on God while equipping him to fulfill the work of God's. These long months of pandemic have, I'm sure, been something of a wilderness experience for many people, testing people's patience, strength, energy, resolve, and yes, even their faith. I'm sure there have been times when we have all gone through experiences that have caused us to, to question the reality of God's presence in times or in moments, or even of his love for us. But when we are tempted to doubt God or God's love for us, tempted to turn away from God or to test his faithfulness toward us, we can learn from Jesus' desert experience. In the wilderness, while he was separated from others, Jesus was never alone. He had the Spirit and he had the Scriptures. Jesus allowed himself to be led by the Holy Spirit even into that place of testing. And when he found himself being tested or tempted, he didn't depend on his own thoughts or his own feelings or even on his own words. He turned to God's word where he found comfort, strength and encouragement as he answered each temptation with words from the Bible. Mark tells us that angels came and helped him. The angels assured Jesus that his father was there with him, watching over him, loving him, acting through him. We are never alone. And just as angels were sent to help Jesus, God sends them to help us as well. Jesus knows, he understands what we go through. We see here that he was not immune to testing or temptation. Hebrews 4, as we thought of earlier on, says he was tempted in every way that we are, but he did not sin. And when we find ourselves being tested or tempted to doubt the love of God, to turn away from God, or to test the faithfulness of God toward us, we can go to God 
knowing that he knows, knowing that he understands what we are going through, and that when we do go to him, we receive mercy, and we find grace to help us just when we need it. May God bless you this week and in the weeks that lie ahead. Lord, we come before you this morning with our prayers for others. We give thanks that you are always there for us. We know that even when we wander away from you and from the path of your love and truth, you never leave us and you never let us down. We give thanks that you are the kind of God who doesn't wait for us to be good, perfect and always doing the right thing before you accept us. We recognise that you have made us in your own image and given us the ability to think, plan, choose, love and to face temptation in its many guises. Lord, let it not be the things we always confess to make us to feel good. Let it not be the things we think we should confess to make you feel good. Trite answers, the easy solution, the careless response. How quick we are, Lord, to pass judgment on others, yet slow to judge ourselves. We are afraid sometimes to acknowledge how far short we have fallen of the standard you set for us. We ask for your help this morning to give us the strength to follow the path you have set out for us. We pray for those whose faith has been severely tested by the loss of family and friends, the pain of separation and the worry of ill health. We remember those who are finding the isolation and lack of company difficult to cope with. And of course, we think of parents, children, friends, whose patience is severely tested by the closeness of living together when schools are closed, people are working from home, and finding space is a problem. Lord, we pray for strength and guidance for the many people in this country who have been made redundant and finding it hard to make ends meet. From the comfort of our homes, we look at a world torn apart by sectarianism and racial strife. Starving children fill our TV screens while we sit down to a hearty meal. Help us, Lord, not to be slow in voicing our concerns about a society which tolerates prejudice, poverty and complete indifference. We pray for those who deliberately entice others to do what they like, when they like. We think of those who misuse money, including public funds, exploit the vulnerable, trade in malicious gossip or demean their own bodies. Help them, Lord, to resist the temptation so glibly put forward. This morning we pray for our minister, congregation and all family and friends, especially those who are not so well and feeling the strain of day-to-day -day living, those in hospital and care homes and all those who are helping in any way to alleviate the present crisis. Lord, you know the areas of our vulnerabilities and you know when and how we will be tempted today and in the week ahead. Be with us and help us to make the right choices that are pleasing to you. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
To him who is able to keep you from falling and to bring you faultless and joyful before his glorious presence. To the only God our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty and authority from all ages past and now and forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We'll be back again next Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and I hope you can join us then on our YouTube channel. You can also find a selection of hymns which Alison has recorded. For now, stay safe, take care and God bless.